Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today I'm doing a second type of video in a series that started with the Morphe palettes and condensing them down to six pan palettes or eight. I think it was eight actually, eight pan palettes. Maybe I should get that straight. But today we're gonna be talking about some Natasha Denona palettes that I have made into minis. The mini palettes from Natasha Denona have five shades in them and her normal palettes usually have 15 shades. But today I thought I would take the concept of reducing a bigger palette into a smaller one and make my own versions of the mini palettes. Now, some of the mini palettes that she has on the market are of palettes that are existing. So there's like the Lila palette and then there's the mini Lila. There's, I believe, the Sunset palette and the mini Sunset. There's the Gold palette and the mini Gold. So she has done this, but I do believe that in those minis, she's usually not taking from the original palette and making a smaller one. She's adding additional shades, but making a smaller compact palette. So mine are different than those. And before we get into the palettes that I've reconstructed essentially. I want to say that this is different than the Morphe one because for the Morphe one I didn't necessarily like the originals. I felt like they weren't very curated and that's why I was choosing to curate them and really make the color stories pop and show that they're different I guess. With the Natasha Denona this was hard because I do think that a lot of them are really beautiful and, and well curated. So trying to capture the spirit of a 15 pan palette in only five shades was difficult. <laughs> I I did my best. I'm sure there are a lot of different ways that you would go or other people would go and I don't necessarily think that these smaller palettes are better than the original whereas with the Morphe that was kind of the point of like look how much better these are than all those extra bullshit shades that you get. This is more just like this is the condensed down version trying to capture the spirit of the original palette in only five shades. Just thought I would make that clarification because it has nothing to do with like the originals being bad. None of that, none of that's happening. It just was like a fun exercise. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Let's just get into them. We're gonna start off with a bang and we're gonna start off with the gold palette from Natasha Denona. This is the one that is probably the most tempting to me. I want this palette. If it ever went like 50% off, I would buy it. Like I would get it. <laughs> I think this one is really well done. And I did write down the kind of descriptions of these eyeshadow palettes. So on Natasha Denona's website, it says the gold Gold eyeshadow palette features 15 shades with the classic signature Natasha Denona formulas, including mattes, metallics, sparkling, and duochrome eyeshadows. The palette debuts different gold shades in different textures, which are complemented with browns and greens, so one can create a broad selection of looks, varying from a natural gold to a dramatic glam look. I tried to use these descriptions as guides for making my mini gold palettes, but there is a mini gold palette that Natasha herself has made, so I will show that now. As much as I think standalone, this gold palette is pretty, there's definitely more greens. When it says there are greens in the gold palette, to me, they look like dark blues, like they're like dark blue greens. There's definitely a lot more blue where the mini gold that she made almost has this like khaki army green type gold in it and it's more that. And I actually really like the original for those bluey greens. So my palette, let me show you my palette. This is probably the one I'm most happy with. This was hard to create though. Honestly, I did a lot of deliberating <laughs> for this palette. And I think like looking at it, it seems like duh, like that's like the natural way you would go. Uh, and it looks really great, but coming to, coming to this was difficult. So the first shade that I have in here, I think is so pretty. <laughs> it's one that I am I really would want. It, this is brass, it's a metallic. Brass is described as a bronze gold green duochrome. And even though Natasha's website doesn't describe it as a duochrome, it does have a shift to it. It's really quite texturally beautiful and kind of chunky. And it was between this one and the lime color. What's that one called? Lime chrome. I didn't know which one I wanted to do, but I ultimately went with brass because I thought that paired with the blues, you could really kind of turn it more that bluey, limey, golden color. Or if you paired it with more of like Dijon and the other shades that you could keep it more gold and, and push it that way with just flashes of the green. So I tried to make make this mini palette have as much variation in depth and also getting a classic gold look, but also you could do and add those greens because I think the greens are really what offset this palette so much and really just like enhance it and add so much contrast and so much visual appeal to me. So yeah, <laughs> brass is the first shade. Next on here, I picked Dijon and this is a matte like mustard color. We have to put this in here. We just have to put this in the mini gold, you guys. Like 
Duh, duh. All right, next I put in the center of the mini palette because it's in the center of the palette, Oro, which is a gold metallic color. It's like the truest, very kind of a yellow gold, but you have to have this color in the gold palette. Come on, you have to. So I had to put that one in. Next, this is one that was tough. I put in Aurora at the end, but I was trying to maybe add in the matte dark brown. I was trying to get away with only putting in one of those blue green shades, but ultimately it just didn't feel like the gold palette. So I did put Aurora in. This is described as a sparkling cream blue emerald glitter. I thought that this would pair nicely, obviously, with the matte blue, which we'll talk about next. But I also thought it would be a fun pop, something sheer you could put on just the eye by itself. And again, when I look at the finished product of this five pan and I look at the gold palette, I do think that it captures it quite well, um, even though it's funny to me that in a gold palette, two of the colors aren't gold, <laughs> which is quite a significant amount considering there's only five. All right, and then last we have Python, which is a creamy powder. And this is described on Sephora's website as a light medium green. What? <laughs> that is not what I see um, when I look at that color. This is like a dark turquoisey blue to me. Like, yes, there is some green in it, but it definitely has blue. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'm looking. I'm like, am I wrong? Are you wrong? And trust me, sometimes when I edit back my own video, <laughs> I will hear myself call a color something. I'm like, what are you talking about, bitch? Like, that's not what the color is. Maybe it's a situation like that, but I don't know. This color, the gold palette, it doesn't look like a light medium green. I would never ever <laughs> describe that as a light medium green. Call me crazy, but I wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, I think that this palette is so, so pretty. This kind of looks similar to the Smoke Sessions palette, actually looking at it, except more gold instead of like, green and blue. Anyway, I also liked how there were variations in depth. So we have some of those lighter shades, but then we really do have Python to ground any of the looks and add the drama if that's what we're looking for. I don't think going forward necessarily all my palettes have that balance, but it's so tough with five shades. It really is tough. I'm trying not to put too many light shades where there is no depth, but I also don't want to only have really deep or very similar uh, depths of tones and not have variation there either, but I also want to capture the colors in the palette I'm not like redoing the color. So it's a balancing act for sure. Uh, anyway, so that's my mini gold Let me know what you think. I'm gonna have all three here There's the original the actual existing mini and then my mini made from the real gold palette moving on Let's talk about the Safari palette. This is an all matte palette from Natasha Denona It says here the all matte Safari palette includes warm and cool muted tones varying from light medium to dark The concept as well as the color scheme are Safari inspired offering a modern and sophisticated shade range where one can create supernatural or daring eye makeup looks. I think the original Safari palette is pretty. There are quite a few like lighter shades in there. You have some deeper shades and like mid tones, but there are, yeah, I think muted colors and it is a mix of cool and warm tones. So I tried to keep that in mind. Here's my Safari palette. Okay. <laughs> I like my Safari palette. I have one little light shade and then the rest to me, the three middles are kind of mid to maybe deep tones. And then the last one's deep. It's all matte. So there are no sparkles. There's no shimmer in here. And my goal when trying to create this, I really wanted to capture the different colors in here and not really, I didn't wanna use up too much of the space with browns. So I thought that the colors, when I look at this, that orange, that kind of like very pinky type shade, there's a blue and then that like army green, those really stand out to me and are something that make this palette different. I think for a lot of these, I had to compromise with the fact that you might not be able to create looks using only this palette, but I thought that these would be nice companion palettes if you already had a lot of stuff. It's almost like an expansion pack palette. You know what I mean? Like you already have the whole thing, but you just want a little expansion pack of those colors and you can add them to some of the browns you already have at home. That's how I thought of some of these and especially the Safari palette because I wouldn't create an all matte look with these shades, just like only these. I don't think that that would be happening. So let me run through the colors that I picked. The first color is Tamarind. It's a creamy matte and it's described as a sand color. Next, I have Tribe, again, a creamy matte, obviously. This is a medium bright terracotta. We have Maasai, which is a medium aubergine. Savannah is a medium dusty army green. And then Fata Morgana is a dark 
dark turquoise. So, you know, I did have some mid-tones. I had that lighter color and I did have the deep one. I tried to keep that and I do think that there are some cooler tones and then also some warmer tones, but I would love to pair this with a few different shimmers. All right, moving on to the third palette that I did. This is Lila and the Lila palette is the only Natasha Denona palette like of the larger ones that I have owned at one point. I didn't quite get on with it. We've, we've heard this story 10 billion times at this point, but this is a purple palette. It is inspired by purple. That is one of Natasha Denona's favorite colors. And so this is what she came up with for that. It says here, inspired by her love for the purple color scheme, this is the ultimate fall inspired palette. The Lila palette features 15 gorgeous eyeshadow shades in a combination of warm and cool violets, plums, and fuchsias. Perfect for every skin tone. This palette includes all four classic Natasha Denona textures in her signature chroma crystal, creamy matte, metallic, and new innovative duochrome shades. Now for the Lila palette, there is actually a mini already. And I think the mini actually has quite a few purple shades in there that I think are missing from the Lila. When creating my mini Lila palette, I was surprised by how many purples there weren't. Like there are a lot of other colors that aren't purple in this palette, which I do think helps make a rounded palette. You can create a lot more looks. There's some more versatility to it than it just being like, you know, monochromatic. But to make my mini, I did want to kind of keep it a little bit more purple. Like I really honed in on that purple, but I did feel like I was missing like a really deep matte purple there was really nothing too, too deep matte wise in here. And I remember that also being the case when I had the palette. So anyway, this is my version of the palette. Lots of shimmers, only one matte. Um, it was tough. It was so tough, again, creating this palette based off of what already exists in the Lila. But I do think that this very much highlights the love of purple. I think it's a really beautiful little quint. And again, this would be so great as an expansion pack of purple to anyone's collection. You could bring in your own blacks. You could bring in your dark like mauvey or dark matte purples and incorporate them in here. So let me explain the colors and why I picked them. So first we have the only matte in the palette, I know. I do wish there were more mattes, but this is the one I could do. Per Se is a creamy matte in a medium smoky purple gray. I thought this would be a nice transition color. It is like that more cool tone shade. I thought it would pair well with stuff. It could also look really beautiful on its own. And I thought this was one of the only colors that was a matte that really stuck to purple. The middle three shades, we have three different purples and I feel like they're a great option for something that's kind of a neutral purple, a more cool tone toned purple and a more warm toned purple. So the first one in there is Livid. This is a duochrome and it's described as a medium lilac with silver blue highlights. This to me is that in between color um, where it's like neutral. It's not too, too cool. It doesn't pull too blue. Um, it's just a very classic. I think these two, the first two would pair so nicely with each other as like a pretty simple look. Next in the middle, this is the standout shade I feel like in the original Lila and I wanted to keep that by keeping it in the middle. This is Amethyst and it's a metallic medium bright violet. This is the cooler toned purple in the palette. And then I put next to it Viola, and this is a metallic as well. It's a medium fuchsia violet. This has a lot more pink in it. It took everything in my power not to put the pink in this palette, which I do have two variations of this. I'll show them at the end, like things that I was like, maybe this or maybe that, but I ultimately think that this is like my final presentation piece, uh, but I'll show you those anyway. And then last for here, this is the color that was so hard to pick. I didn't know what I wanted to put in for the the last shade. I wanted some depth though. I knew that but it was so tough because there was nothing matte and I'd, uh, I went back and forth. But ultimately I decided on Layla, which is a metallic shade and it is a dark gray mauve. I was hoping maybe you could use this to kind of smoke stuff out. If I remember correctly, when I had this palette, um, it was quite deep. So I do think it would add quite a bit of depth, even though it has some shimmer to it. It was tough and I, I feel like Natasha Denona specifically, when I was looking for pictures of these palettes, I tried to keep it pretty consistent consistent of where I was getting my photos because looking at pictures from Sephora to Beauty Bay is where I use most of them to like just different websites that have pictures of this palette and also all the others. The variations are so different. Some look very vibrant, some look really dull. It was tough not having the palettes with me. It would be so awesome if I had all these palettes and then I could actually like show you what the, you know, little mini would look like, but alas, 
ass I don't. So anyway, that is my Natasha Denona mini. And these are the other options that I had. The pink shade, which I think this is like more fun. Uh, it keeps it more lighthearted. And I do think that this would help make it very capsule-y. You know, you wouldn't necessarily need that darker shade if you had other darker shades in your collection or whatnot. I, I love, I do truly love the look with the pink. It it's so pretty to me. But I was trying, I don't know. I was trying to just add a little depth in there. And then the other one that I had is using another one of the mattes. But I don't know, ultimately, I just liked... It's not quite as cool as the uh, Layla shade was, so I went with Layla. Moving on, I have two more palettes to talk about. I only did five for this video, but I do have about five more that I could do. So if you really like this, let me know, and I can do a part two for Natasha Denona, and I can finish up the other five palettes that I was thinking about uh, making into minis. For the last two palettes, I made the Sunset and also the Sunrise Palette Mini. So the Sunset we'll talk about first because it came out first, and there is actually a mini palette also, but this palette is described as Natasha Denona's warmest creation yet. Inspired by the sunset colors, this palette features 15 gorgeous eyeshadows. The palette combines warm brown tones, burnt oranges, reds, golds, bronzes, and yellows. This palette includes all four classic Natasha Denona formulas in her signature chroma crystal, matte, metallic, and duochrome formulas. I really wanted to focus on some of the iconic colors that are in here. This palette is what inspired the Yes Please palette from ColourPop with that bright yellow shadow. Everyone loved that yellow. So I'll show you the sunset palette that Natasha came out with, the mini one. I think this is a really beautiful palette on its own. I get the sunset vibes I, and I do think it's a nice companion palette to the original. I really do like that Natasha Denona came out with mini palettes that were similar but not exact and not just recreations of the original. I think I mentioned that earlier but I thought I'd just reiterate and I felt like with this example the mini she came out with and then the mini that I created from the original palette are the most like different. I guess, I don't know. They just are totally different vibes to me, even though they're inspired obviously by the sunset and I'm using the original sunset palette. So this is my palette that I did. I really wanted to focus on the yellow and the red and the bronzes and the oranges. Anyway, let me go through the colors I picked. The first one we have in here is Morgana and this is a duochrome red with a gold shift. I thought this one was really pretty. This to me is like sunset. It's that orangey red with the shift, beautiful. I think it plays nicely with the matte red that's in here as well as the yellow. And it adds that orange color that would be missing otherwise if I didn't have this in there. So really like that one. Next is Panjin, which is the creamy matte red. I went back and forth with not putting the red in, but this is just something that I think a lot of people really enjoyed about the palette as well um, with that matte yellow. So I put the matte red in. Next we have the matte yellow, which is Soul. Exactly that, a warm matte yellow. Such a iconic color in the Sunset palette. There's no way I could create the mini without that yellow. Next, I decided to put in one of those kind of bronzy golden shimmers that I think most people would use on the lid. This one is Abade. Abade, not sure how you say it. It's a chroma crystal formula though in a warm gold. In the pictures, didn't really look super like yellow gold. It looked more almost like a bronzy gold. And that's why I picked it. I thought it, it worked well with everything. And then last in here, I wanted to put the dark brown. This one, I also have a variation of the lighter, like more warm toned brown instead of this darker, almost, it looks kind of cool toned, uh, but this is Igneous, I believe. Yes, and it's a, just says deep brown, it's a matte. I really liked this because it added a lot of depth to the palette once again. I thought it would pair nicely with the red. If you wanted to like kind of have a blended out crease with the red, really deepen it up in the outer corner with that deep brown, and then put either one of the shimmers all over the lid, that would be so beautiful. I, I just felt it really anchored some of these colors and kept it a little bit bit more wearable and neutral and I feel like overall the sunset palette does have a lot of like wearable neutral looks to it and this deep brown added that in one color and I didn't have a lot of space obviously to do that. I think on its own, this is my least favorite. Like if I look at just the mini, I prefer the original palette over the mini. I think there's just obviously more variation and um, you know, it was hard to get in some of those lighter tones that I think really help make a look come together in this mini. So um, that is something I did feel like was missing, but this does have all those punchy pops. Moving on to the final palette, you guys. We are on the Sunrise palette. This is one of her newer releases. Love is her newest, I believe. This is the one that came out right before that. This one definitely has a bit of a different color story, but it's similar. Obviously, it's like the sunrise and the sunset 
how different are they? I loved some of these peaches. There was like a purple in here that I loved. So I wanted to keep it a little bit more, I guess how I like to say it is like tropical. How Natasha Denona describes the sunrise palette though, it says here, inspired by the warm glow of a morning sunrise, this impeccable palette, whoa, contains the shades of warm sunny yellows, crimson corals, earthy browns, and powerful pinks and fuchsias, all made to melt together in perfect harmony. The sunrise palette is featuring 15 brand new shades, including Natasha Denona's iconic formulas packed with the highest quality ingredients to create buttery soft shades that blend seamlessly to achieve vibrant, ultra pigmented, long lasting looks. The iconic duochromes, velvety mattes, and sparkling metallic textures will elevate your senses and empower you to create your very own radiant works of art. Wow, they're really selling it on that one. And the reason I yelled iconic is because it's in all caps, okay? <laughs> they meant it. This sunrise palette, color story wise, I think it's pretty, but it's definitely the least attractive to me. Like again, gold is like my number one. So this is what I came up with. This one was a little bit difficult as well. I think probably because I didn't really have an attachment to the original palette. I wanted to keep the fun bright shades in here. I maybe could have changed out that orange though with the peachy shade. Maybe that would have been a good choice, but I didn't. So here we are. But let me run through what I picked. The first shade in here is Azalea, which is a pink copper duochrome. I really did um, load this palette up with the duochromes. I thought for the sunrise, I just really liked the idea. There were so many in this palette and I really think that on the eyes. There's a lot of sunrise um, inspiration there. I just, I really love duochromes also. So I have that. Next is Carnelian, which is a creamy matte burnt light orange. Again, maybe this would have been better as the peach shade. I feel like the original sunset mini that I made has more of those primary, like really crayon boxy colors, like that red and the yellow really punch home a primary situation to me. Whereas this one I wanted to kind of make like offshoots of that and make it more definitely my style than total primaries. But anyway, I put that orange in. I love an orange like that. Next is Glow, which is a creamy matte fuchsia. I wanted to put the pink in here. I thought that this would really enhance any of the shimmers that you were gonna do. I love a pink look, and I did think that the pink was different enough than the red in the original Sunset palette. Moving on, Awakening is the next duochrome that we have in the palette. This is described as a lavender nude duochrome. I really liked this because it had these like looks of pink, but because it has that lavender Lavender shift. I thought it would work well with the purple that's next to it. I thought it kind of was a good tie-in color. Again, I also just love those duochromes. And then last in the palette is Aster, which is a violet mauve duochrome, the most purple color in the palette. And I think the reason I really wanted to include this one is because one, to me, this is one of the colors that really pops in the sunrise palette itself. Like that purple, my eye is drawn to it because it's one of the only purples in there. And I also feel like it's one of the shades that really differentiates it from the original sunset palette. So I think this makes the sun rise very distinct from the sunset. And that's why I included it. So that is my five pan for the sunset. I think I like the five pan better than I do the original palette. I don't know, I think it's really pretty. I think it has those warmer, like more pink shades instead of golden, but then it has those really beautiful purples. All right guys, and those are my versions of mini palettes from the originals. I'd love to know what you guys think. And if you guys have Natasha Denona palettes, because you can remove the shades, I challenge you to maybe, if you like one of these, I guess, if you don't like them, then don't do this. But if you do like them, to remove the pans and create these palettes and see what looks you can come up with. If you have any of these palettes I talked about, you have the mini palettes at your disposal. So that could be like a fun way to get excited about the makeup, see what looks you can create if you liked them up here on the screen. Okay guys, let me know if you want to see part two to this. And other than that, thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.